Jocelyn Bio's new work, Schoolgirls, or The African Mean Girls Play, directed by Tony winner Rebecca Tageman, is set at Ghana's most exclusive boarding school. And just like the Tina Fey movie from which the subtitle is taken, Teen Girl Menace runs rampant. We're walking into a world that many of us have never been in and don't know at all, and I think we'll find sort of oddly familiar in terms of sort of how young girls treat each other in a high school and how kind of vulnerable they are to systemic problems. I think African mean, at least in my play, they are brutal. What's up everybody? This is Alon Jones. If you're new to my channel, welcome. To everybody else, welcome back. I want to talk about that clip that you just saw, which gave a little bit of a backstory about the African version of Mean Girls, the play School Girl. I have a few things to say about it, and I'm going to get right into it. So first off, it was written by Jocelyn Bio, and she actually created this play, I think it came out in either 2016 or 2017. So that's a while ago. But within the past two weeks, there's been a lot of buzz about the play online, and I'm going to get more into that in a second. But Miss Bio's inspiration for the play was that in the 1980s, there were a lot of Ghanaian pageants apparently and either white from what I read or biracial women would win the crown showing you know colorism also in 2011 a biracial woman an American Ghanaian woman won the crown for Miss Ghana and people didn't like it there were other Ghanaian contestants that they felt would have been better suited for the crown and it kind of mirrors uh, the controversy over the latest pageant, the latest pageant winners over here in America. That's one end of it. On the other end, what inspired her to write the play was a very personal experience with colorism in her own life. And I encourage you to pause this video and read that when it comes up. Read the whole thing because I think it's really important. So, like I said before, this play came out a few years ago and it kind of looks like it had come out recently. And just a week ago, Ms. Bio got a major opportunity to partner with a theater company that recognized her work. And I think that that speaks to how popular the colorism topic is right now. I think it's a prime time to capitalize on the topic of colorism right now, especially if you're the right shade. And considering that it's such a hot topic, I find it odd that this play has not been talked about, promoted, or acknowledged in any way by the colorism community, which is predominantly African, so you would think that they would want to support. And because the colorism market is as big as it is right now, I kind of find it hard to believe that this play was missed by the people in the colorism community because there's people that scour the internet daily for colorism news to push to the forefront of social media. So that's interesting. Another thing that's interesting is that in the articles and the videos that you do find about the play, the concept of colorism is tiptoed around. And the word colorism is avoided altogether. I did find this in uh, um, a piece written by a white woman about the play. She said, quote, in a lot of ways, Schoolgirls is a play about racism. There's just no white people in it, unquote. And I have to say, in the videos that I've seen, with white people talking about this play, it looks like they're kind of relieved to for once not be the bad guys. So she says, it's a play about racism, there's no white people in it, so obviously it's an intraracial system of discrimination, which is colorism, but for some reason they shy, <clears throat> excuse me, shy away from using that word. The thing is, you're not off the hook. Where did colorism come from? Who created this colorist system? I'm not saying the answer to that is white people. I'm just throwing questions out there. 
So if there's no white people in this movie, I mean play, who's the bad guy? Who created this colorist system? Well, it must be the lighter skinned people. It must be who they describe as the American born white skinned biracial contestant of the Miss Ghana beauty pageant. And I think that that speaks to the displacement that goes on in the black community, not just with colorism, but it is definitely evident within the colorism community. So black people of a darker shade are taking things out on the inappropriate person. So for instance, you have this pageant and a biracial girl wins over full-blooded Ghanaian women. Who chose her? The judges. Who's in charge of the entire pageant? Are you coming for them? Or are you coming for the winners of these pageants? People think that it's an answer to come for light-skinned people and biracial people instead of the colorist system. The Eurocentric beauty ideals that make Ghana and other countries feel the way that they do about blackness overall, that's not acknowledged, that's not targeted. There's a character in the play who bleaches her skin. She bleaches her skin so much that she gets sick. She ends up going to the hospital, I think. And that's a real thing. Skin bleaching is a very, very huge problem in these other countries. Are people coming for the manufacturers of these bleaching creams? The marketers of these bleaching creams? Black China just went to Nigeria marketing her skin bleaching cream and it was wildly successful. And the black community seemed to only have a shaking my head type response to it. And to her, I just saw an ad with her in it promoting her skin lightening pills. No one's saying anything. Nobody really cares. They're still just coming for light skin people. And this theme of beauty, it's a prevalent theme when it comes to colorism. And it's something that is really disappointing to me. Beauty, Miss Bio, that's the other half of Miss Bio's inspiration for writing this play. Rejection, beauty, being seen by the opposite sex, being chosen by the opposite sex being chosen and regarded as most beautiful, which is something that, in my opinion, adults shouldn't be hyper-focused on. That's something that I can see children being obsessed about. But when adults are, that means that something else needs to be addressed as far as their mental health. Once again, the displacement going on. That is being ignored, the mental component of that the mental issues that that arises from. That's being ignored and once again, it's just, I hate light-skinned people. They're the cause of all my problems. If they go away, I wouldn't have problems anymore because I would be regarded as most beautiful if they did not exist. So, I also think that this play it's not being pushed by the colorism community because this play shows an image that's undesirable for their agenda. The colorism community does not want something that depicts a group of dark-skinned girls as angry and against the lone lighter-skinned biracial girl They don't want the image of a group of 
darker skinned African girls against the lone lighter skinned American looking biracial girl. They don't want the image of bullying and outnumbering and discrimination out there. So I think that that is why they're not promoting this play. It's kind of, it's, it's very telling. I think at this point it's being recognized that people from other countries and what happens in other countries is the cause of the disruption of our social dynamics over here in the States. Because these people and their experiences when they immigrated to other countries, when they immigrated to this country, I'll keep it to America, but the UK is also dealing with colorism activism. So when they immigrate over here to this country, they bring that, I don't want to use this in the pejorative sense, but they bring that baggage with them. All of their experiences with colorism and not being chosen for the skin color and having lighter skinned women being cho and men being chosen over the majority, the natives, all of that is really strong in other countries. They bring it over here. Meanwhile, black Americans didn't have that. They didn't have those dynamics. We never had it to that extent. The most was some bullying and some jokes at light people's expense not trying to minimize it because it was still problematic, but it was, I don't even know any black Americans to skin bleach, for example. That seems like an international thing, outside of America. People outside of America are doing that. So, if anybody has seen this play, let us know what it was about. <laughs> let me know how it was. Um, I haven't seen it, and I just wanted to put those thoughts out there about this. Let me know what you have to say in the comments. That's all I have for today, and I'll catch you guys in another video.